Obviously, in the free world, I didn't make a lot of good choices or I wouldn't be here in the first place talking to you. Does that make sense? While it might seem like you've heard or seen the worst there is to see about serial killers, the truth is, more of them keep sprouting up at an alarming rate leaving us even more horrified by the lengths they are willing to go to torture their victims. In today's video, you will learn all there is to know about Anthony Allen Stone, aka the Tourniquet Killer. We'll take a look at why and how he became a serial killer, as well as other juicy details concerning the man's life. My name is Zach, and you are watching Crime Origin. Anthony Allen Shore, a native of South Dakota Rapid City, was born on the 25th of June, 1962, to his parents, Robert and Deanna Shore. Both of his parents were in the military, and as a result, the family constantly moved from place to place. Eventually, the family, which consisted of Anthony, his parents, and his two younger sisters, Laurel and Gina, settled in Houston, Texas. Although many would argue otherwise, most people who grow up to become serial killers typically come from unstable homes, and the case of Anthony Allen Shore is proof of this. Anthony's parents, Robert and Deanna Shore, did not have a peaceful home. They both engaged in extramarital affairs, and it didn't end there. The pair were constantly at each other's throats. The two carried on like this for as long as they could before finally divorcing in 1976. With both parents constantly at each other's throats, it's easy to conclude that this would have a negative effect on how they related with their children. According to Anthony, his father, Mr. Shore, was quite abusive towards him and would beat him for no reason. To make matters worse, when Anthony was only 13 years old, his mother molested him. At quite a young age, Anthony had begun showing signs of antisocial behavior. He was said to have killed a neighbor's cat and was accused of sexually assaulting and molesting his female classmates and, even worse, the female friends of his sisters who were super young. Was that really the worst, though? We'll find out. In 1983, Anthony Allen Shore got married to his first wife, Gina Lynn Worley, and together they had two daughters. However, the two divorced in 1983, and the custody of his daughters was given to him. Fast forward to about 14 years later, in 1997, Anthony married his second wife, Amy Lynch. But this, like his first marriage, the two eventually got separated after Amy accused him of abuse. Anthony Allen Shore was nicknamed Tourniquet Killer because he murdered his victims by strangling them. He would use a bind around their necks mostly, and then use a toothbrush or bamboo stick to control the bind. This control either tightens the bind or loosens it. People say his tool was quite similar to those twitches farmers used to control their horses. We'll get into all that in a bit. Anthony Allen Shore became an active serial killer from 1986 to the year 2000. In his lifetime, he was responsible for the murder of one woman and three girls. Anthony's first victim was a defenseless 14-year-old Laurie Tremblay. She was killed on the 26th of September in 1986. Anthony attacked Laurie while she was on her way to school and tried to assault her sexually, after which he strangled the teenager with a cord. Anthony went further to carelessly dump her body in Houston behind a Mexican restaurant. Anthony's second victim was 21-year-old illegal Mexican immigrant Maria Carmen del Estrada, who had been working as a nanny with her best friend, Rosa. Maria, who hailed from Guerrero, Maria had come to the United States of America in search of a better life, one she would never get because on the 16th of April, 1992, the young woman's barely covered body was found face down in the drive through of a Houston Dairy Queen. After extensive investigation, it turned out that Maria had been sexually assaulted and then strangled by you know who. It was also said that the cord which she was strangled with was so tight around her neck that it was barely visible. A year after that, on the 19th of October, 1993, Anthony Allen Stone waltzed into the home of another defenseless 14-year-old Selma Jensky. While in the house, Anthony held Selma down before he bound and assaulted her sexually. In the moments that followed, Anthony did something out of character. He did not kill Selma. Instead, he gathered his things and left. Did the serial killer grow a conscience at this time? Well, nobody knows, 
and we probably never will be able to figure out why Anthony decided to surprise everyone in that manner. Moving on, another of Anthony Allen Shore's victims was Diana Rebelar. Diana Rebelar was nine years old and was said to have lived in the Heights area of Houston, in front of a small duplex. On the day she was murdered, she had gone to a local grocery store in the neighborhood to get a bag of sugar. The employees in the store where she got the bag of sugar mentioned that they saw her leave the store. Diana, surprisingly, however, did not return home on that particular day. It wasn't until the next day that her body was found behind a building on a loading dock. Diana Revelar was killed on the 8th of August in 1994. And after her body was examined, it was revealed that Anthony had beaten her and assaulted her sexually before strangling her. A neighbor at the time had given the police a lead concerning Diana's death. The neighbor mentioned that she had noticed a van that was always in the area. What prompted the police to link Diana's death to that of Maria, however, was Anthony's killing method. A rope with a bamboo stick, which was found around the young girl's neck. In 1995, on the 6th of July, Anthony Allen Shore killed his fifth victim. Dana Sanchez, a 16-year-old whom Anthony had offered a ride in his van while she was on her way to her boyfriend's house. Probably thinking Anthony was only being a gentleman, Dana accepted to ride in Anthony's van. Along the way, Anthony began to make advances at her, all of which she resisted, also mentioning that she had a boyfriend. Dana was not seen or heard from again after her encounter with Anthony until seven days later when an anonymous call was made to a local news station directing the police to the decayed body of the teenager in a Harris County field. The plot twist, interestingly, is that Anthony Allen Shore actually made that telephone call. What was he possibly playing out? For years, it would seem like the tourniquet killer was going to get away with his crimes. Luckily, however, 1998 happened. Anthony Allen Shore was found guilty of molesting his daughters, Tiffany and Amber. As such, the police had requested a DNA sample. Later in the year 2000, some detectives brought out the cold files from the case of Maria Carmen de la Estrada and ran a DNA test from underneath Maria's fingernails. Since her case had grown cold and had remained like that for eight years, it was considered a stroke of luck for the detectives to have received a full genetic profile from the DNA test. The profile was therefore uploaded to the DNA database of Texas, which has all of the DNA profiles of sexual offenders in Texas. Anthony Allen Shore's DNA was also in the database. This record dated back to the time when he submitted a DNA sample to the police after he was convicted for molesting his daughters, albeit he was offered a plea bargain, which led to a probation. After the examination, Anthony's DNA, unfortunately for him, matched the DNA underneath Maria's fingernails, and he was arrested on the charges of murder. This did not, however, happen in the same year. It took a while before the results could be matched to Anthony because of the issues in the lab at the time. Due to an audit, the laboratory was shut down in 2002, and so some DNA samples, including the ones from Maria's nails, were taken to another laboratory to be retested. It wasn't until 2003 that the results were matched, and Alan Shore was arrested immediately. During the interrogation of the tourniquet killer, or to be more precise, 11 hours into his interrogation, he confessed that he was responsible for the deaths of Maria Carmen de la Estrada, Diane Rebelar, and Dana Sanchez. He also confessed that he murdered the 14-year-old Laurie Tremblay and raped another 14-year-old in 1994. Because the detectives only had evidence that Anthony was involved in the death of Maria Carmen de la Estrada, they had no idea how to link him to the death of the other three women. Another reason they found it so hard to link the murders was the fact that Tremblay had been murdered using a bind, or as it is commonly called, a ligature, which was a little different from what he used in murdering the rest of his victims. The detectives had asked him why he went from using a ligature to a tourniquet, and he simply replied, because I hurt my finger while murdering Tremblay. Although Anthony confessed to the rape of one and the murder of four women, the prosecutor, Kelly Siegler, charged him only for the death of Maria Estrada due to the fact that her case had the most forensic evidence. On October 23, 2004, Anthony Allen Shore asked the jury for the death penalty. His defense attorney, Alvin Nunnery, told the jurors he believes it's time for him to sacrifice his life for what he has done. Little wonder if he was really sacrificing his life 
or paying for his crimes as he ought to. His trial began in 2004, late October. The jury found him guilty of capital murder. During his sentencing, his only surviving victim, who would then be 25, would come to the court to testify against him. He used a knife to cut off my panties. As I was screaming, he got upset and told me I was being too loud. She said she felt his hands around her throat. Then she continued. I came out of my stupor and I realized I had to do something. If I don't do something, I'm going to die. According to the unnamed survivor, she was able to kick him off, but he threatened her before he left the house. Interestingly, as far back as the death of Laurie Lee Tremblay, the detectives had a knack that it could be a serial killer, especially because none of Laurie's jewelry was stolen. So they speculated that it could have been a robbery. We knew we had a serial killer working. John Swain, one of the police detectives who investigated Tremblay's death, said, I think that the police department danced around that. We didn't want the public to panic. Anthony Alexander Shore was finally sentenced to death in 2004, November 15th. On January 18th, 2018, Anthony was executed by lethal injection. He was 55 years old and the first person to be executed in the United States in 2018. Before his execution, he said that he made peace. His last words were, Hoo-hoo-hoo, I can feel that. And that sums up the beginning and the end of Anthony Allen Shore, AKA the tourniquet killer, who claimed the lives of numerous women in his day. Thanks for tuning in to Crime Origin. If you want to learn more about the most notorious killers to have ever lived, then you should check out one of the videos on your screen. Thank you for watching.